magic. Hi everyone. Since you seem to like the last video we did like this, I've invited James back to talk about some more of our physics degree horror stories. So these are some of our maybe least favorite experiences from majoring in physics. So we did undergrad together, but honors in separate universities. So that's our last year of undergrad and kind of the hardest year. Um, one of my horror stories comes from my honors year and it was our electromagnetism exam. And I'll always remember this exam because it was a difficult course and we were all quite stressed about the exam. Um, the questions were from this book called Jackson and we were anticipating it to be really difficult. But uh, there was one part of the exam that everyone in the class thought we might be able to pass and that was this memorization test. So the lecturers had given us a sheet of about 20 equations to memorize beforehand and we knew that the first two questions on the exam were going to be asking us to regurgitate those formula and we had to do it perfectly like if you forgot a minus sign or a symbol somewhere you got zero but this seemed like the best way to get marks in the exam so we all show up to the exam we put away our books and we're just sitting there waiting for it to start but the lecturers don't show up and it isn't until half an hour later that they eventually turn up um, and in that half an hour of waiting for them to come and start the exam because everyone's so worried about memorizing these formula, there's just sort of 30 people sitting at their desks, quietly chanting like <laughs> Maxwell's equations <laughs> in his various forms, because um, we were all so stressed about it. Um, but yeah, that was one of the funny, sort of horrific experiences from honors. My story comes from my honors mid-year talk, which is through our honours we have a year-long project that we do on top of all of our coursework and through the middle of the year we basically talk about what our project is and what we know about it, what we plan to do. So I had given a 15-minute talk on my project which was related to crystal field theory and we get to the questions part where people from the audience just start asking questions but if not a lot of questions are being asked the person hosting it, who was one of the professors, asks some questions just so you can answer some questions to prove that you know what you're doing and that you can get some marks. So I get asked a question and then immediately someone from the audience, someone in my group, starts answering for me. And at this point I just don't really know what to do, like this is my question, I'm supposed to answer it to show them what I know. And he just immediately, not giving me any time to speak, starts talking. I'm just sort of staring at him. The person next to him just elbows him sharply, but he kind of just ignores it and keeps on talking. And it was just not really a horror story, but just a weird experience <laughs> that left me kind of confused yeah. in front of 30 people. Probably not what you want when you're trying to answer your own questions in yeah. a talk. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so th those are our separate stories, but um, I remember together and I think it was second year again, second year physics. Also the waves and optics course from last <laughs> Perhaps time. Perhaps the same guest lecturer we spoke about last video. Um, we were having a test and so we were like in, in a tutorial room and we were all silently working on our waves and optics test. And then what everyone hopes for in a test, <laughs> the fire alarm goes off. <laughs> um, and that had never happened before and I was like, oh, what do we do? This is like, I don't know. And we all got up and left the room and, and went and evacuated outside but no one really like told us we should stay away from each other everyone was like kind of talking to each other but so trying not to say too much. Immediately we had 30 <laughs> physics students just all clumping in a circle like oh god what do we do oh god are we allowed to talk should we not be discussing this yet? Yeah and like it was actually quite a hard test there was one question that like no one knew how to do and we were all sort of like looking at each other and we were just, just standing like, together. No one wanted to say so you know I know the answers but we're all definitely thinking. The lecturer was nowhere to be seen I don't know where he was yeah um, but eventually we were, like it was a false alarm, we were funneled back into the room after quite a long time as well. And the lecturer was just like, I don't know what to do, keep, keep doing the test. <laughs> and we were all just thinking, should we bother? Is this going to even be counted? Is this going to be just thrown in the bin? Yeah, well, like, so it was a hard test with a unusual turn to it. My other story comes from my third year talk. I have a lot of interesting stories with presentations. group talks and <laughs> presentations. Where in third year we have a half year, a semester long project 
in which my one was to build a laser. And I was working with a friend of ours. The supervisor had given us a gain medium, which is what gives the laser its color. The gain medium in question was a neodymium doped uh, silicon, no, it was phosphor glass. And we get to our talks, my friend goes first, he starts talking all about neodymium and the lasers, specifically what we had researched, we wanted to make sure we knew about lasers themselves, we researched neodymium lasers, we found neodymium YAG lasers, which is yttrium aluminium garnet. So we were like, oh yeah, neodymium YAG lasers, these are great, we're going to talk all about our neodymium YAG laser. And then friend gets to the end of his talk, our supervisor just sort of puts up his hand and says, hi, yeah, so what laser are you using? Because I'm pretty sure I gave you neodymium in phosphor glass. And friend just sort of stands up there, second just aghast, and immediately just starts laughing. Like, he has no idea what to do. <laughs> it's obvious he's just completely stuffed up. Yeah, I was in the audience for this talk, and it's like, we heard all this great stuff about this laser, which is apparently not the laser you used. <laughs> and he was just like, Oops. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm in the audience like, okay, I'm about to give my talk. I'm about to talk for 10 minutes about a laser. I know it's not my laser. How can I salvage this? And you'd How already can made, you'd made the slides and you'd planned and practiced the talk on yep. the wrong laser. And at, le at least you were second, so you had a heads up. Yeah, so I had all my slides already prepared. I was going through my talk like usual. And then at one point in my slides comes up, neodymium YAG lasers. And I said, neodymium YAG lasers are the most uh, common type of neodymium laser. However, <laughs> ours is neodymium in a phosphorus glass. And I was like, nailed it, saved it. At the end, during the questions, supervisor raises his hand and says, hi, yeah, not a question, but you guys really like neodymium YAG, don't you? And I didn't really have an answer for that. I just sort of awkwardly laughed. Yeah, no, I like that story. <laughs> I don't know if the video is too long already, but I will tell one more story, and that's the case of the missing assignment. <laughs> um, so this is this was a story that is quite horrifying for someone that's not us, our friend. Um, but I was sort of involved as a collateral in this story, so it horrifies me still thinking about it now. So I don't know, our friend. Um, couldn't come to uni on this day that we had to hand in assignments because he had to go to work. So he'd stayed um, around uni the previous evening, written up this big assignment that he'd spent quite a lot of effort on, um, written it up all nicely, and then he left it in the physics student's room and sent me a message saying, hey Toby, can you hand in my assignment for me tomorrow because I can't make it to the class? And I was like, sure, I'll pick it up in the morning when I go in and I'll hand it in at class time. So I go there in the morning and I'm like, oh, I've got to pick up his assignment, looking around the room and I can't find it in there. And so I sent a text that I knew would cause widespread panic. <laughs> that was to him saying, where exactly did you leave the assignment? <laughs> um, and he was telling me where exactly he left it and it wasn't there. And so he was getting panicked. Um, and he asked me to look all around because he was at work at the time. He was like asking me to look in the recycling bin and the bins outside. And I was like looking everywhere for this assignment because I knew like we had to hand them in. Um, and I think eventually what we guessed had happened was the cleaners had come in throughout the night or early in the morning and they pick up any loose paper that's just like on a desk, on a chair, anywhere around and they recycle it and take it off with them. <laughs> so that assignment apparently got recycled, um, which was tragic. And I think he had to um, talk to the lecturer and, and end up doing it all over again, which was pretty sad. But um, yeah, top tip from that story is don't leave your assignments <laughs> in reach of the cleaners. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, thanks James. Um, and I hope you enjoyed listening to some of those stories. <laughs>